Hi everyone. Well, I just finished taking my flats and my dark flats from my ex expedition last night. The telescope took pictures of the globular cluster M3, the Crescent Nebula, the Omega Nebula, the Lagoon Nebula, and the Eagle Nebula. And all of that while I slept. How did I do that? Let me tell you about Nina. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop, and if you like my videos, please subscribe and click the little bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Well, what is NINA? NINA is uh, Nighttime Imaging in Astronomy, uh, N-I-N-A, and it's an open source software, and it is free, but they would like your support. However, the program completely controls the telescope. It controls the guide system, the telescope itself, uh, the positioning of, of the, uh, the mount in the telescope. It also controls the camera and the autofocuser. And if I put a filter wheel on here, it also controls that all automatically and all while asleep. Actually, I did this throughout the nighttime hours. I started last night at 11 o'clock and I finished, well, it finished at about 5 o'clock this morning. And, well, let me go upstairs and show you. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is open up Nina. I already have the telescope aligned now. So the next thing I do is I open up Nina and I'm gonna open up with the uh, CGM. I have different profiles saved for different uh, telescopes and mounts that I have, but this is the CGM. I'm gonna open it up, load profile. Okay, there it is. Now, need to uh, load up the equipment. So I click on the camera. It sees my uh, camera, the uh, Altair 294C. Uh, different cameras you can select from as well in your arsenal. And uh, click on that. And it's loading the camera. I want to set the uh, temperature at zero degrees since it's so humid in Savannah. I don't want to go much lower than that or else I'll get doing on the sensor. Uh, looking right now, the dew point's in the low 70s. It's still 84 degrees outside. Ugh. Okay. Uh, I don't have the filter wheel attached, but if you have a filter wheel, you connect it right here. Um, the focuser, I do have the Pegasus Auto Astro Focus Controller. Uh, you have different choices to pick from, but that's the one I'm going to use today because that's the one that's on this telescope. I'm going to connect it, and there it is. It's connected. Very good. And the telescope, I'm going to connect. Uh, I'm using CPWI, the Celestron uh, Guiding Program. Now, if you have a, uh, your, your telescope set up with your hand controller, um, then you can, can pick, uh, you know, like the Celestron Telescope Driver or the EQ Mod, uh, whatever you want to use. Um, but I'm using the CPWI, so that's what I have my telescope uh, star aligned with. So I'm using that. Connect, and I'm connected. Okay. Now the guider, I'm using PHD2. You have different choices, once again, to select from. Uh, but I'm going to select this one here, and the guider is connected. There, you can see it right there. Very good. Now, next thing I want to do is go into the Sky Atlas. Look for some targets. So the target I want to look at for beginning here is M... Um, let's go M13, the great globular cluster in Hercules. Okay, search for that. And M13 right there. And it's just past the zenith. It's very high in the sky. So set for framing assistance. I'm going to do that right now. Stretch the screen out a little bit. And sometimes this is a little bit slow because it's online, searching for the online uh, system. I can close these while I'm at it. All right. Uh, let's... Um, Go one by one. There it is right there in the Sky Atlas. So now I want to um, use this as my telescope parameters. There are the uh, right ascension and the declination. So I want to tell the telescope to go to that. So I'm going to slew to it right now. And um, it, it is going to that. I can show it to you right there. You see the telescope going to the great Hercules cluster. Is it on this side of the meridian or the other side of the meridian? It looks like it's going to be on the 
other side of the meridian. Okay. There it is. It's going to be somewhere around in here. I can make that full screen. Yeah, it's going to be right in this area here. Very good. All right. So, um, uh, let's just see how we're doing. Let's just go to imaging. Let's go to um, uh, the actual imaging itself. Let's just take a picture. Uh, five seconds at 450 on my system here. I'm just going to take a picture. I'll go to image so one, two, three, four, five. And the image right there, it's nowhere near. It, it missed it. Okay. So let's try to plate solve it. Okay. Um, do it. Let's go to plate solve it. See if it does a better job. I can look at the images here. This is telling me where it's going. Okay, it's taking a new picture. There it is. <laughs> it found it. Actually, it puts it right almost smack dab in the middle. Okay, plate solving. Let's see what it did here. Well, the first time through, it was off by a degree. The second time through, it was off by a minute. I think it's going to try to get even better than that. Let's see what it does. Yeah, a minute's a bit much. There we go. What do we have there? Six seconds off. Let's take a look at the image. Yeah, smack dab in the middle. So, yeah, the plate solving works. Um, I'm using the All-Star... Um, what is it? All-Star ASTAP. Um, plate solving. Um, go into here. Uh, plate solving. I have the ASTAP as my plate solver and the blind solver all sky plate solver. But you can pick on different ones, if, you know, the ones you like the best. This ASTAP is pretty good. Okay, let's go back to the um, uh, imaging, sky atlas, and the framing. There's the framing right there. So, let's replace this as the sequence I want to start with. Now, first thing I want to do is set up the sequence, uh, the controls to tell the telescope what to do. And, um, oh, there it is. Uh, it transits at about a little before midnight tonight, and there we are now at about uh, uh, 10 o'clock. All right. So when I start guiding, uh, when I start, I want to start guiding, and I want to slew to the target, and I want to center the target. Very good. It's already centered. Uh, I can add more here if I wanted to. Let's, let's add another one. Let's do the, um, oh, I don't know, the Omega Nebula. Let's try that. Let's see if I type in Omega. That's in that's Messier. Uh, that's 17, right? M17. Search. There it is right there. Okay. That's coming up a little bit later. Um, except for framing assistance. So there it would be, like there. Right? That looks pretty good. Um, I can move this around if I wanted to. For example, let's say I wanted to center it right like that. And I'll just say recenter the image, and it's going to change the our right ascension and declination a little bit. And waiting. Yeah, you see it changed the uh, right ascension declination. Okay, let's let's um, uh, add as a sequence target. Okay. I'll do that and go over here. Of course, I want to um, start guiding when I go to that target. Um, turn it on. Uh, they salute to the target and center the target. Sure enough. Okay. Now let's go back to the um, Hercules cluster there. Uh, let's, of course, we're going to enable it. The first thing we want to do, though, is the autofocus. Turn it on. Let's make sure we're in focus. Uh, you have different options, too, particularly if you're using... Um, uh, different exp uh, number of exposures after a long time. If you have a thermometer connect connected to your uh, focuser, you can uh, you know, look at the change in temperature and so forth and so on. If you're changing filters, you might want to uh, you know, put it on or off. I don't have a filter changer on right now. But anyway, 
there's your focus and I'm gonna take um, let's just do for right now six frames because I just want to test it here and uh, let's do what uh, 300 seconds not 400 300 my guidance is not that good uh, it's a light frame of course you have different options here um, if you have a filter wheel you can pick the filter and um, I'm going to stick with one by one binning you have your choices I'm going to dither yes what dithering makes a world of difference in the final products I'm going to dither every other frame my gain is at 450 for this camera with the Altair uh, what do I have on there the quad band filter so I, I need a little bit more light because that's uh, uh, filtering quite a bit of light off okay so that one there is for the uh, Hercules cluster and then for the um, uh, it's causing the horseshoe uh, it's, uh, I'm going to call it the Omega uh, uh, Omega Nebula okay there now again um, start guiding on slew to target on center target on um, autofocus on okay and then go down to here and uh, let's let's do um, oh 12 images I don't know I'm just exampling here 300 seconds again it's a light frame no filter or will on there uh, I turn the dither back on yes yes and yes okay so we're ready to go um, and I can add even more of these and these and what have you uh, if I want to change the order of the uh, targets I can uh, click on this maybe I want that one first I can just click on this and it'll push it over see but obviously I want this one first so I'm going to go back to that that's how you do that uh, so let's see what happens hit go and it's starting to uh, record now what's the um, uh, system doing it's, it's waiting for the telescope I think to settle um, I know what it's doing it's taking um, uh, auto, uh, it's plate solving that's what it's doing first thing it's got to do is plate solve okay there it is okay of course we knew that it was on the center of the object so now I think it's going to uh, start the autofocus routine and it's waiting for the telescope to settle I have it settling and I think it was well, five seconds in this case it should be 15 I should change that to 15 I had it on five but that's okay um, this is the uh, going to check the focus now and here, here's the autofocus routine setting up before it starts imaging and uh, I can turn this off uh, okay all right got one I think it's using the uh, HFR values here uh, for the focusing it's going to take one every six seconds and it's going to take about oh, anywhere between 8 to 16 it depends uh, on that so all right it's going to start taking some images right now and of course I made a mistake here I put in 400 instead of 300 seconds so this is going to be a long exposure uh, but anyway the, you'll get the idea how this system works here and then when the Hercules cluster is done then it'll go on to the uh, It'll, it'll slew to the Omega Nebula, plate solve that, and then go through the autofocus once again, and then start the imaging. Um, and then when it's done, it's going to park the cam or park the scope and turn off the camera and warm up the uh, sensor. So that's, that's kind of nice. So there you have it. That's a pretty good idea how this Nino you know, works. I tell you, it, it, it's, it, it's well worth it. And uh, if you like this program, you know, here's the address for it. Uh, on, on uh, you can get it through um, the internet very easily. It's a free download, and support these guys. Uh, they're doing a very excellent job. Uh, you can uh, support them with a one-time PayPal payment, or you could actually support them by uh, a monthly payment uh, with a patron um, sub uh, subscription. And that, 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 that's the way to go. So, okay, there you have it. Yeah, I know that other programs can do the same thing. You have a, a Sequence Generator Pro uh, that does a, 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 just about the same thing, and APT, Astrophotography Tool, that does almost exactly the same thing as well. But the thing about Nina, it's open source software, and it's free. 
but they do ask for your support. So help support them. This is a fantastic program and I continue to like it more and more as I learn more and more. And where do I learn? Right here on YouTube. I get a lot of my informational tutorials uh, from other YouTube users who are using Nina and other programs as well. So continue watching and unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. <laughs>